So there's a very nice uh, view today on the Sunday the 29th of May 2011 that uh, there's, there's an hotel in Stockholm and uh, Port and looking further over there we've got the uh, Vasa Museum and there uh, were the, the ship, uh, 16th century ship, or uh, 17th century ship I should say, and, and the museum. Uh, only one of its kind still surviving in the world. The place I'm standing on now is uh, Raoul Wallenberg's Tor. Hello, I think I've got that in the there. I think that's in the, uh, the camera. It's rather difficult to see because it, although it's overcast, the sun's quite bright. Uh, Raoul Wallenberg was a, a Swedish diplomat who saved the lives of thousands of people uh, in the Second World War. Um, he was born in 1912. Um, he came from quite a wealthy family. But, uh, and a part of his education was to uh, sort of travel around. He got educated as an architect, I think, in, in the United States, in Chicago. Came back to Sweden and found out it was useless. While he was there, he was sort of working, doing sort of manual labor and things like that. Although really? he came from quite a wealthy background. Uh, he did manage to get jobs thanks to connections within the family. Uh, one of which uh, took him to various places around the world, including to uh, Haifa in Palestine. And uh, just before the Second World War broke out, he got a job as a representative in a Central European trading company, uh, which was owned by one uh, Hungarian gentleman who was Jewish. And uh, with the increasing restrictions placed on his travel, uh, he appointed Raoul to be his uh, representative in um, Budapest. And so that uh, Raoul was then quite well placed. Uh, some time later, he uh, found himself um, in the diplomatic service. And uh, now he witnessed uh, the deportations of Jews from Hungary in 1944. And certainly by the summer of 1944, no one would be under any illusions about what had happened. The BBC itself had actually published uh, an account of the gas chambers in Auschwitz around the second week of June 1944. It comes from the report made by two uh, Hungarians, Rudolf Ruba and um, Mr. Wetzler, who escaped from Auschwitz in May 1944. And there was, I mean, there was absolutely no doubt as to uh, what, was, what, was, what was happening. Uh, Ballenberg used his uh, contacts, uh, not only within the Nazi occupation authorities, but also within the Swedish uh, uh, consular contact to issue consular passports to people and the benefit of this was even as far as that uh, people did not have to wear yellow stars if they had this Swedish uh, passport because they're now considered as Swedish citizens. Um, apparently, according to one eyewitness, he even went to trains which were about to depart from uh, to Auschwitz and handed out passports there. And thus, anybody who had the had these passports would be could be taken off the train or out of the collection depot. As to the veracity of that, I don't know. I haven't checked the source right back, but uh, it seems quite outstanding that somebody actually could do that, and for this to be accepted. The amount of people he saved, I mean, it's, it's, it's thousands and thousands, it's not, uh, 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 the number, the precise numbers are, are, are not known, um, but there's lots and lots of people. And he stayed in Budapest until Budapest uh, uh, was captured by the Soviet Union. Now, in January 1945, he got a uh, summons to appear before the Soviet general, uh, name, uh, I can't remember the name, Malenkov, I think it was. And uh, he said, well, I've been invited to Malenkov's, or maybe it was Melinsky, I can't remember. Uh, I don't know if it's as a guest or as a prisoner. As it turned out, it was as a prisoner. And then the trail goes cold. Uh, what we do know is that he ended up in Moscow, without any doubt, and he was held in the Lubyanka because he shared a cell with uh, one uh, n well, Nazi functionary called Richter. Uh, Richter was the person who had been in Romania and was responsible for overseeing the deportation of the Jewish population of Romania to uh, Belgians. Um, as it turned out, the Romanian Jews were not actually there, but he'd actually issued orders to that effect. So uh, they got the, the humanitarian and the Nazi mass murderer uh, in the same place. The um, 
there are a number of uh, theories as to what happened. Uh, another thing that is known that is that in 1989, Wallenberg's family received a cigarette case and other personal uh, belongings which were found uh, in a Soviet archive, uh, allegedly when they were uh, putting some new shelves in. So uh, um, when he was killed, it's not known. It's normally given the date it's around July 47 or thereabouts. The reason for this is that uh, there are documents uh, which uh, suggest that he was um, he had well either a heart condition which killed him, which probably means he was shot. Um, he was interrogated. According to Richter, he was interrogated for an hour and a half. Of course, there are other people actually uh, claimed they saw him. I once saw a program on television maybe 30 years ago. Uh, uh, this was when his fate certainly was not known, and um, that he had been Lubyanka. Some British person has claimed that he'd been, he heard of a, uh, somebody claimed to be a Swedish diplomat, uh, but he didn't actually see his face, so I presume that they were in the adjoining cells or whatever. Um, so he did die in 1947, he was 35 years old when he died, he was murdered by the Soviet Union, he saved uh, thousands and thousands of lives, and he is rightfully remembered on this spot, and there's many places which have memorials to him, including one in London, in Argentina, in uh, Germany, he's got a couple of streets named after him in fact, uh, one of which is a, has a metro station, or U-Bahn station I think, Westbahn, I can't know which, in Berlin. And here we have his, his monument, and it says words to the effect. Oh, well, I'll read that. I don't have to remember words to the effect of. The road was straight when Jews were deported to death. The road was winding, dangerous, and full of obstacles when Jews were trying to escape from their murderers. And you have it in many other languages. I'll read in Polish as well, just to make the point. Droga była kręta, niebezpieczna i pełna przeszkód, kiedy Żydzi próbowali wywierać się mordercom. Droga była prosta, kiedy Żydom wywożono na śmierć. Uh, in Polish it's the other way around from English, but anyway, it makes the point.